welcome back friends so in the previous video i have given you a quick overview of module number four chapter number one to chapter number six in this chapter number seven eight and nine okay and i hope you understand the value of this quick overview in the previous video i have spoken to you about the quickest method of learning the subject so this is a part of that okay and by chance even if you have not seen the previous video do watch that video the link is already given in the description box okay so chapter number seven this is about the duty drawback chapter seven this is about duty drawback right now what is the duty drawback in simplest understanding you can say refund of duty now this is comprised from section 74 up to section 77 prima facie very small chapter but very relevant not only for the purpose of exam but after the exam also in your professional career it is going to help you in a big way so duty drawback this is under two different provisions under section 74 and under section 75 under section 74 duty drawback is available when imported goods are returned imported goods are returned or you can say those are exported okay what is the difference between the export word export and return return to the same person exported to any person now this can be under two different situations this is unused and it can be used right if it is unused then maximum is 98 percent of the duty paid will be refunded by way of duty drawback and if those have been used there is a reduction in the rate of duty drawback so in case of use this is reduced at prescribed rate reduced at prescribed rate okay so what is prescribed rate how that is calculated that is a part of the full course okay now as far as section 75 is concerned this is a relevant for two situations export of goods manufactured or produced in India so if the imported material has been used in the manufacture production of any of the goods and those are exported then duty drawback is available in the section 75 and that is at a certain percentage of the export value of the goods in this case this is based on the amount of the duty paid in this case this is based on export value of the goods so this is based on export value so when i say export value this can be the value either fob or realized whichever is less on that value this is allowed and for this three types of rates are available these rates will be known in detail later and these are all industry rates you can write full i am writing air you can write all industry rates those are brand. then the next one is brand rates and third is a special brand rates so three types of rates are possible right so this is brief about what is a duty drawback so this is a refund of duty but two different situations same goods are returned or exported either used or unused if unused the maximum rate of duty drawback is 98 percent if those goods have been used and then those are being returned or exported then the duty drawback rate is reduces 
and how much is the reduction that depends upon what kind of article whether those are imported for personal use or those are used for commercial use or those are motor vehicles or those are other things what is the period and within how much time duty drawback is allowed so section 74 says maximum period within which duty drawback is allowed the goods are returned within a period of two years but on case to case basis extensions can also be allowed so maximum period for which extension can be allowed is two years original plus two years extension can also be granted so maximum period for which duty drawback is permissible is four years if goods are written after expiry of four years no duty drawback in any condition in this case nothing like that because these are the goods manufactured or produced in india so in this case when goods are exported then duty drawback is available now when duty drawback is claimed in this situation duty drawback is allowed even without receiving the export proceeds but subject to condition that export proceeds will be realized and if the export proceeds are not realized then the amount of duty drawback allowed can be recovered back with interest and under section 77 we have provisions where duty drawback will not be allowed will not be allowed why the duty drawback will not be allowed for that we have different parameters one of the most important parameter is that the amount of duty drawback claimed is more than the market value of the goods in that case duty drawback will not be allowed note it export value is less than mark or rather duty drawback claimed is less than market value we're not talking about export value market value of the export good is less than the duty drawback claim duty drawback will not be given plus central government may prohibit claim duty drawback if the government is of the opinion that the exported goods may be smuggled back into india no duty drawback so that is what we are going to see in chapter number seven and along with these provisions we have duty drawback rules also and there is a potential that a practical question is framed on this so this becomes a very very important chapter okay so that is chapter number seven seven now chapter number eight is comparatively a small chapter that is about only about the refunds and refund is covered under section 27 20 and some more small provisions are there so refunds are basically two provisions section 26 a and 27 so under section 26 a the refund is given under very specific situation 26 a if the imported goods are not as per the order given or those do not meet the requirement or the specifications prescribed or the goods are not suitable for the use and goods are returned or exported within 30 days then duty drawback is available 100 percent that is a refund that is not called as duty drawback because duty drawback is section 74 on but 77 or 74 up to 77 and this refund is under section 26a so this is referred as a refund not as a duty drawback Another difference is that under section 74 maximum rate of duty drawback is 74 uh, sorry 98 percent but in this case 100 percent refund will be given. So section 26a that covers a very specific situation that the imported goods do not meet the requirement those are not as per the specification those are damaged and in that situation goods are returned or those are exported or those are trans those are destroyed but with the prior permission of officer or transferred in favor of the commissioner but within the specified time limit then duty drawback or rather so full refund of duty will be allowed other refunds are covered under section 27 so wherever excess amount has been paid so refund procedure is there and doctrine of unjust enrichment is also part of section 27 so when the refund will be given to the applicant when the amount of refund will be transferred to the consumer welfare fund all that is part of chapter number eight okay so that is a refund so as far as customs act is concerned this is comprised from section one to section 90 in your syllabus okay so that much is a part of your syllabus let me give you a brief what we have discussed in customs act what we are going to see in the full course okay customs act 1962 so when i teach the subject my coaching is based on bear act plus rules practical questions all other question answers as given the material will be taken up we follow the sequence given in the material 
but we don't refer this material for the simple reason because this may not be updated on day to day basis. But everything given in the material will certainly be covered. Nothing is left out. Okay. So you, as far as your syllabus in custom sector is concerned, section 1 and 2. In section 1, this is talk about, uh, talks about applicability and section 2 is talking about the definitions. So applicability and definitions. Section 3 to section 6, this talks about officers. What are the levels of the officer, their categories of the officers and their appointment and their power, all that is discussed from section 3 to section 6. Section 7 to section 10, this is about appointment of various places. Appointment of various places. So that is custom port, custom airport, land custom station, then the, the air freight stations, international courier depot, foreign post office, the route by which goods can be transited and coastal ports. All those places are appointed under section 7. Section 8 talks about the custom area and section talks about section 10 talk, talks about boarding and deboarding stations within the custom port. Section 11 is an exhaustive section, independent section. This talks about prohibited puts. prohibited goods then section 11 a to 11 g this is about notified goods eleven h to eleven m this is about specified goods eleven n is also there but that talks about exemption Then section 12 up to 26, this is the most important area and this is all about assessment. Levy and collection is also part of this. Valuation is also part of this. Rate of duty also comes into this category. So lots of things are covered in this area. 27, 28 up to 28 DA, all this is about refund, demand, etc. Very important area, refunds and demands including preferential rate of duty that is covered under section 28 DA then 29 to 43 this is about import export procedure rather 44 import export procedure right something similar there then section 49 up to 51 sorry 45 this is again a continuation of this but different different way of handling the goods so that is up to section 51 then section 52 to 56 this is about transit and transshipment Then section 57 up to 73, this is about warehousing. Seventy-four to seventy-seven. This is duty drawback. Section 78. Oh, sorry, this is up to 76. This is 77. Up to 81, this is related to baggage. 82 to 84, this is import export by post. And section 85 to 90, this is about stores. This is the end of your syllabus as far as Customs Act is concerned in your exam. Remember this list. Okay. So when you have complete overview of what you are going to study, then certainly learning becomes easy. And if you want to refer some other chapter, some other topic where you will find an answer that you already know. Right. So I wish you revise these two videos again and again. That will give you a lot of understanding.
okay and once you revise the notes taken and then you study it will help you in a big way the next chapter chapter number nine that is about the foreign trade policy chapter number nine this is about the foreign trade policy foreign trade policy is preceded by law that is called as foreign trade development regulation act this is separate law foreign trade development regulation act and this act authorizes the central government to make foreign trade policy foreign trade policy is prepared for five years and the current policy was valid actually up to 31st March 2020 but that continues to be valid till now so you can say that will continue to be valid until the new foreign trade policy is announced so this policy is actually from 2015 to 2020 but this continues to be valid even in the year 2022 and it's likely to be there in 2023 as well now this foreign trade policy this is divided into nine chapters this is chapter number nine of the module four and the foreign trade policy itself is having nine chapters chapter number one this talks about general general provisions regarding import export point chapter number two these are specific provisions for import export chapter number three these are promotion policies so in this we have road tap and we have SEIS earlier there used to be MEIS now we have MEIS is gone and that has taken place road tap has taken place number four this is about duty free import authorization advance authorization so export promotion schemes chapter number five this is epcg scheme chapter number six this is about export oriented units and SEZ. chapter number seven this is a deemed export chapter number eight this is about complaints And chapter number nine, this is definitions. Definitions of the terminology used in foreign trade policy. So in a nutshell, the whole policy is your in your syllabus, right? But the main chapters are chapter number two, three, four, five. And all this we will cover up in detail. Okay. So say for example, here we have promotion scheme so promotion road type scheme SEIS in chapter number two we have one very specific thing that is about the status holder who are the status holder so if the export touches a certain level within a span of three years so for giving the status the the part of export performance during three years and four years is taken into account so one star export house two star export house three star export house four star export house and five star export houses so when a, a specific turnover of the export is achieved during the specified period that status is granted and with that status lots of benefit come okay so that is a part of chapter number two then if here we have rod tape scheme and SEI scheme so when goods are exported certain incentives are available under road tape that is the refund of the duties and taxes whatever local duties and taxes have been charged then SEIS that is service export from India scheme so some incentives are available on the value of the goods value of the services exported then DFIA duty free import authorization and advance authorization so advance authorization is when the import is all, import of the raw metal is allowed in raw metal plus other consumables is allowed for manufacture of the goods required for export and duty free import authorization that is goods manufactured already exported and then we import the raw material required for further manufacture of the similar kind of goods so there is a difference advance authorization means pre before import comes first manufacture comes later and duty free import authorization in that case export export comes first and import comes later 
okay so those are under epcg this is the scheme for capital goods so these schemes that is uh, dfi and advance authorization these these are the schemes for raw material and other consumables capital goods cover required for export that can be imported under the epcg scheme Similarly, if we have a plan, we have a, to set up a plant in export as a export oriented unit or a unit in the SEZ, then the procedures differ. Then what they can import, or how they can import, how much metal they can utilize, how much they can dispose of in the local market, how much they can export, all that procedure is governed under the chapter number six. Chapter number seven is giving certain transactions within the territory of India, but those are treated as if those are exports. That is referred as the deemed export. So actually, metal will not leave Indian territory but treated as if those are exports. Under chapter number 8, if there is any dispute between supplier of the goods, supplier or importer, importer and exporter, means importer is in India, exporter overseas or vice versa, then to a certain extent complaint can be handled under chapter number 8 and all important definitions are given under chapter number 9. Okay, so this is a brief overview of the entire syllabus. Full coverage of the customs and foreign trade policy for CA final that will take around 40 hours of coaching, including all practical questions. Only customs I am talking about, not GST. GST will take another 75 to 80 hours. That is besides. So, total exhaustive coverage of the lectures will be there for your exam so in the lectures you know in the online lecture which will be a pre-recorded version available for you we will complete the syllabus we will complete all important question answers and for every topic there is a mcq test so as i told you earlier that mcqs are not your not only for preparing for the exam but when you do mcqs that gives you a clear idea about your understanding of the subject so even if MCQs are not going to be there in your exam 100 percent, 25 percent are MCQs or other 30 percent are MCQs, okay, not 100 percent, but still we need to prepare through MCQs in a big way so that we have 100 percent clarity on the subject, right. So as I told you that customs portion is going to take around 35 to 40 hours and you should start with customs. That is a very strong suggestion for the student, those who really want to score well. Why? Because generally students start from module number one, that is GST module one, module two, module three. By the time module three ends, he is fully tired, exhausted, and somehow he covers up this portion of 25 marks. And later on, he fails to score in this. Overall result is affected. But if we start from the point where the scoring is assured, and then we go to GST, right? In any case, you know that GST is for 75 marks. You yourself will put in more, more effort therein. So I am starting from the point which is generally left out by the students. And I will make it interesting. I will make it easy for you to understand. And I will always be available for answering your questions. So for any information required regarding the detailed course, do call on the number given in the description box. Do watch my previous videos on the subject and be in touch with me. Thank you very much.